I'm going to talk about an article that has had a, a big and lasting impact on me and has actually changed how I think about an entire subset of content marketing, and that is case studies. Uh, and all credit here goes to uh, actually Walter Chen, so Animal's uh, founder, chairman, for turning me on to this article and helping me contextualize and think about it. Uh, and it's this article here by Andrew Wilkinson. Uh, you probably know him, the guy that runs Tiny Capital, but also built a very successful uh, design agency, and it's Slack's $25 billion secret source. Now, if you think about a case study from first principles, there are probably two things it has to do. It has to persuade people that your company, your agency is interesting and worthwhile, and you should probably work with them. There's some benefit to be had from doing that. And it should leave the reader, I think, richer for having read it. Uh, there should be something contained within here which is inherently interesting and useful to them. Even if they don't work with you, they can still go away and do something on the back of this that is valuable. And most case studies, I think, absolutely fail those two criteria. They are shallow, self-aggrandizing, very unrealistic, and often over-egg the role they played in another company's success. Uh, and they're boring and not very actionable or interesting. Maybe there's a few graphs showing, you know, trend lines going up. Maybe there are a couple of quick tips, but there's not much substance. There's not much like expert insight in them. And case studies don't have to be like that. And this proves the point. Um, so things I like about this, Slack is very much still the hero here, right? It is not about Meta Lab's amazing process. It's positioned very much as uh, Slack is this amazing company with all this success. We had a small but important role in that. And that is so much more credible and convincing than saying, hey, you know what, the success of Slack, this absolute behemoth that all these companies use is down to me and my design agency. Even if that were true, it's not credible. It doesn't also feel particularly good. And it's not probably the right kind of uh, ethos and attitude you want to share to prospective customers. Our job is to enable the success of other people. We can play a big part in that, but we are not here to glory hunt and take credit for that. And that's done very well here. This is about Slack. And it's framed interestingly as well. If you take out MetaLab, if you stop this being a case study, it is still an interesting and useful article. It's about a big, well-known company that did interesting things. It talks about their $25 billion secret source, which I want to know. And it actually kind of delivers on that as well. There's great context and insight here into how the design of the product evolved over time, how it was positioned relative to its competitors, the different feature sets, the different styles that made it feel different to other companies in the marketplace. If you are somebody building a startup, my doorbell, wait for it to go again. Uh, this is useful to you. There is stuff you can take away from this and learn from, regardless of it being a case study. So the hard thing then, the thing that really matters on top of all of this is Andrew still manages to make MetaLab sound fantastic and make me want to work with them. And he does it by positioning himself as something of an equal and a very active participant in the development of Slack. Uh, I mean, just like, look at this, right? In July 2013, I got an email from Stuart Butterfield. Uh, I was a big fan of his, blah, blah, blah. He wanted us to design his new team chat app. I groaned to myself. So not only is he kind of name dropping the connection, kind of positioning himself as something of a peer to this person, uh, he's also saying he's smarter than him, at least in this particular facet in the area of like design. You know, oh my God, another team chat app, all this experience I've had, like I think this is a bad idea. Uh, and that's something people don't, generally do in case studies, they shy away from being an active participant and uh, showing their expertise and making themselves part of this story. Um, if you read through all of this, the one prevailing thing that comes out of it is that, yeah, you know what, we weren't some kind of tiny, shy, coy little agency that was doing exactly what we were told by Stuart Butterfield. We were big, active parts of this. We helped them design, we challenged it. Um, we have strong opinions about this. And that is just so much more interesting and so much more convincing than uh, most case studies actually are.